Welcome to FTC Essentials, a show aimed at beginner to intermediate level team members and mentors. This episode will cover chassis basics. A chassis is the base structure of a robot or vehicle. In FTC, this is generally the part of the robot you will start with when designing your robot. A chassis consists of a frame, wheels, motors, and any power transfer components. There are an infinite number of ways to construct a chassis. The most common ones for a beginner to intermediate level will be shown in detail here. Don't assume the assemblies shown here are the best, they simply work. I am using the parts and robots that I have available to me. Specific parts and assemblies shown here may or may not be the best option for your team. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Discover how Kettering University students engineer their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotic scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to kettering.edu slash first to learn more and apply. First Updates Now has become the Fun Robotics Network. Check us out at funroboticsnetwork.com and all the social links that you see above here. And check out some of our new merchandise options that are both fun and robotics related as well too, both on our website and right underneath this YouTube video. Tank Drive is not Tank Tread. While that is a possibility, I do not recommend it due to very high wheel scrub and potential field damage. A Tank Drive train has motors on two sides that are controlled separately. Running both sides forward makes the robot move forward. Running them in opposite directions makes the robot turn in place. The most basic wheel is called traction wheel or grip wheel. Traction wheels have traction, which means they won't slide side to side very well. The omni wheel has rollers along the edges of the wheel. This wheel is useful because it rolls sideways just as easily as it rolls forward and backward. This can be used in holonomic drivetrains or to reduce wheel scrub. Wheel scrub is when there is too much friction from the wheels and the robot struggles to turn. Note that it is drifting. This robot is struggling a bit, and I can see on the driver hub that it is drawing more power than when using Omni wheels. Using all Omni wheels moves and spins just fine, no wheel scrub at all. However, the robot can be pushed around very easily and may drift, which leads to reduced accuracy and auto. But if we replace only the corner wheels with omni wheels, the robot can turn just fine and can't be pushed around. Drop center gives similar advantages to omni wheels. Only some wheels will touch the ground at the same time. This means that instead of six points of contact, you have four, or four instead of eight. The less wheels on the ground, the less friction there is, even with omni wheels on the corner, though you will have a bit of a wobble. Wheels can be mounted directly on the motor shaft or on another shaft, which is then connected to the motor via belt, chain, or gear. Not all wheels on the chassis need to be powered. Connecting the wheels together using chain, belt, or gears adds some design and build complexity, but it also has some benefits. It gives more pushing power because there is more contact from power wheels touching the ground and it prevents the robot getting stuck on a game piece or field element. Because the powered wheels are not contacting the ground, the robot cannot move. Holonomic drivetrains can move in any direction. Mechanum wheels are the most commonly used form of holonomic drive. They work because of the rollers that are spaced around the wheels at 45 degrees. When gently pushing the wheel towards the right side of the screen, the wheel moves at a 45 degree angle instead of directly sideways, but it still rolls like a regular wheel. There is a left and a right mechanism wheel. The difference between the two is the direction of the rollers. Four mechanism wheels make a set, two left and two right. Correct orientation of the wheels have the rollers forming an X on the top and a diamond on the bottom. Moving these two wheels in opposite directions pulls the robot towards me. Turning it the other way pushes it away. This is what it looks like driving. Notice the direction each wheel moves. Opposite corners move in the same direction when going sideways. It will run just like a tank drive as well. A less commonly used holonomic drive is X-Drive. It uses four omni wheels placed at 45 degree angles at each corner. There is no defined forward and backward. All four sides are sideways. To move sideways, the wheels move in the same way as mechanism wheels move when going sideways. 
Moving opposite wheels the same direction while not powering the other two moves the robot at 45 degrees. The angled motor mounting takes up a good bit of space, but this drive is useful if you do not have a mechanism wheel set or you want power and speed in all directions to be equal rather than a faster and powerful forward and backward on a mechanism drive. It also turns really well. Your first design decision for your robot may be, what drive base are we running? Here are some questions to help you figure that out. If your team is new to robotics, I would recommend following the chassis guide published by your build systems manufacturer. It is a great way to get familiar with your build system and get your robot started. However, there are a few of these choices that still apply. Are there any elements on the floor of the field? If so, do we need to go over it? And if that is true, let's test out configurations to make sure the chassis can make it over. Are the game pieces going to get stuck under our robot? Should we make sure the chassis is high enough to fully clear it or block it off completely? Bigger game pieces won't have this issue. Will we be bringing game pieces into the robot? This may affect motor placement and the shape of the frame of the chassis. For example, a fully enclosed rectangle versus a U or an H shape. What parts and budget do we have available? Tank uses two or four motors and the wheels that come in starter kits. Mechanum uses four motors and an extra wheel set. Keep in mind that you are limited to eight DC motors and each hub can support four. Mechanum will use all the DC motor ports on one hub. So do we need to go sideways at all or is tank drive motion as much as we need? How confident are we at programming? While there are plenty of guides and example code out there for Mechanum Drive, it adds a bit of complexity and will be a bit harder to troubleshoot. Autonomous is also easier to program for Tank Drive. How big do we want our chassis to be? This may affect wheel size, amount of wheels, and motor placement. What gear ratio should we use? 20 to 1 is a good default option. 40 to 1 is also a common gearbox, but it will be slower, though it does have more torque. Wheel size will also affect speed versus torque. Larger wheels have more speed and smaller have more torque. Here are some tips of some problems to look out for or avoid. If the chassis is flexible, this can cause alignment and structural issues and mechanisms that are mounted to your chassis. Loose set screws. Use a thread locker or frequently check that the set screws in chaff collars and hubs haven't come loose. You don't want to lose a wheel during a match. Also, loose screws in general. Keep them snug and periodically go through and make sure nothing has come loose. Unequal stiffness of wheels. Turn each wheel on your chassis. If any are much easier or difficult to turn, your chassis might not drive straight. This gets annoying in teleop and makes auto more difficult and possibly unreliable. The stiffness can be affected by many places. Some include gearboxes being overtightened, shaft supports being misaligned, shaft collars fastened, too snug against whatever parts are next to it on the shaft, i.e. frames, spacers, bushings, improper bushings, defective or old bearings, and bushings. Double check that the gearboxes on all your drivetrain motors are the same. Different gear ratios will cause issues. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to Fun Robotics Network for future FTC Essentials videos and give this video a like. Drop your tips or suggestions in the comments below. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Discover how Kettering University students engineered their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotic scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to Kettering.edu first to learn more and apply.